you've absolutely got to be able to communicate your value in a short, succinct period of time. What makes a great elevator pitch? Not having one. Everyone gets caught up in this 30 second elevator pitch, but the problem is people don't like being sold to. It's nigh on impossible to craft a super short elevator pitch coming at it with that mindset. Don't get me wrong. You've absolutely got to be able to communicate your value in a short, succinct period of time. But the pursuit of this canned, scripted set of words that you can say is chasing the wrong goal. And if you ever find yourself in an environment where someone's like, right, pitch me, you don't have the positioning to pitch. You're the underdog. If you're being commanded to pitch, that's not the kind of environment you ever want to get yourself into. You want to have created an ecosystem of thought leadership and books and blogs and articles and videos and media talking about your ideas. So the right type of people are coming to you saying, tell me more. From my perspective, step one, I would much rather have an ecosystem of content informing, educating, inspiring people that's bringing people to me. So then people are saying, tell me more about you know, what you do and how you can help. That's a very, very different thing. So that would be my, my first kind of idea. The second thing I'd say to that is the way I think about a pitch, it is about everything. It's about every single piece of communication. It's the emails you send. It's the conversations you have with your team. It's the stuff you put on Facebook or LinkedIn. And so the moment you get away from this idea of like, how do I find this little unicorn set of words that's just going to magically open everything up and you can instead tune in to what is the message that I want to communicate with no script, with no structure, where you can just riff and rant and it gets people engaged and excited. Now, once you've got that, you can definitely have a structure to make it better to be able to speak to specific clients or partners or whatever. But let me give you an example. Anita Roddick is a, my go-to example. I just love the way that she did this. Anita Roddick is obviously the British founder of The Body Shop. Now, while she's passed away now, she didn't run around elevator pitching her products going, oh, look at this particular bit of skincare or that particular moisturizer. She ran around pitching the idea that animal testing was cruel. So there was her elevator pitch. I just think animal testing is cruel. And so I built a company to provide cosmetics to young women who feel the same way. And so if you're to approach an elevator pitch, it's about stepping back and go, what is the way that you want people to think? What is the paradigm that you want to change? What is the shift that you want to make in someone's thinking? So as a result of that shift, the competition become irrelevant. Because the moment Anita Roddick gets it in someone's head back in the day that animal testing was cruel, all of her competitors tested on animals. So she was the only person you could go to if you aligned with that philosophy. So that's the way I think about it. Step back almost coming back to your why, like what's the philosophy or the principle or the shift that you want to make in the world? And instead of trying to create a 30 minute elevator pitch, just share that everywhere at every length.